How you guys doing? What's up, Collision? <laughs> and it's Terrell, by the way, Terrell. <laughs> I asked him backstage because I heard it wrong a couple times. How you doing? I'm good, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to have you here today. We both got our phones out, but I'm the one with the question, so. <laughs> Cool. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is, obviously, everybody here knows about your career in the NFL, and this is not an NFL space at all. So I no. wanted to ask you, now that you're in your second life and your second career, did anything about the NFL prepare you for this life as a businessman and as an entrepreneur? Well, they do have platforms and um, avenues for, for guys like myself and in entering into the league um, to pursue um, life after football. Um, it's not always about X's and O's, um, but they do try to prepare you for life after football with certain programs uh, provided within the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, the NFLPA, um, they definitely are, are very accessible um, to a lot of the guys, and they depend on um, where you are in your career, how business-minded you are, and I think a lot, of, a lot of guys tend to really think about that toward the exit, exit, exiting of their career. But now with, you see things like technology, mobile, how things are going mobile. Um, these guys are starting to be smarter um, with some of their decisions. Mm -hmm. And you've seen the boom of technology and how these social media, media platforms these guys are utilizing um, that are also um, preparing them for, for life after football as well. Right. For your career and, you know, what happened with you throughout the career and then once you left, the NFL is such a fraternity. Was there anybody that you played with or anybody within any of the organizations who kind of mentored you or was a big brother or somebody that you could ask questions about business? Um, there are a number of guys. I mean, they have uh, uh, different consultants um, within the organizations. I, I mean, I played with five teams. So with every organization, they have consultants uh, that you can lean on in with, with any problems or any issues or any, any questions that you may have. So like myself, you know, to obviously transition, I had a 15-year career. Yeah. Um, so to, to sustain that long of a career, um, I had the accessibility of a, a number of platforms and a number of people um, throughout the organization. And I looked on, I looked upon guys that I thought were very successful, that were very uh, business-minded. Um, just for, for number one, you think about a guy named like Steve Young. Yeah. Um, this guy right here is very, very smart. You look at what he's done throughout his career. Um, he could have obviously going in a number of different ways, probably prior to playing football, but we use, utilize our football platform to really transition us uh, into where we are now. Yeah, and I'm looking out on the crowd and it, it wasn't this thick in here for some of the <laughs> earlier panels. And so I just wanted to talk about the importance of, you said a 15 year career, the name Terrell Owens, right. people know it and it's become sort of a brand in and of itself that means a lot of different things to different people. Now, when we were backstage, this guy didn't introduce himself to me, but he was a 49ers fan, and he came over and said, hey, how you doing? Okay. Oh, I remember, thank you for your time there, or whatever. Right. How important is it to your brand, the places that you played throughout your career? Because you weren't playing in small cities. Well, I think initially when I started out in San Francisco, me being from a small town in Alexander City, Alabama, um, then I played in, at Tennessee Chattanooga, and then I got drafted to the big state of California. Yeah. So that was a big eye opener for me. Um, but again, I've been able to really establish a, a brand by just really performing at a high level. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that I did throughout the course of my career has kind of really landed me in some of the business opportunities that I've been a part of. Um, playing football is one thing that's physical. Those are things that I can control. And when you talk about what I did to sustain my career, I had to take care of my body. So. Um, I started to, to become very knowledgeable about nutrition, health, and, and wellness, and fitness, and things of that nature. So that's why, after football, I began to do some of the things like fashion, um, talk about nutritional and fitness um, products that are out there. Um, with those things that I mentioned, um, we talk about technology and where we are today. Um, there's a number of ideas that people are brainstorming about in terms of wearable technology. Um, these are some of the things that I'm currently in, in talks with some companies now um, to, to try to, you know, collaborate with some of those uh, business ventures. Yeah, we, we see that a lot more now, particularly with guys like some of the players who play for the Golden State Warriors. They take such great advantage of being in that area and that proximity to Silicon Valley. But you had a different experience there and then in Philly and in Dallas. 
those fan bases are so huge. Does that play a part in how well known you are and help you get the foot in the door a little bit? Well, yeah, it does. I think, um, you know, you talk about some of the different markets. Mm -hmm. um, I played in San Francisco, went to Philly, Dallas, and my last two stints, uh, I played a year each um, in Buffalo and Cincinnati. Um, of all those that I mentioned, probably Dallas would be the biggest market that I played in. And you think about the Philadelphia Eagles, they had a great fan base in itself. So I was, uh, I've been able to uh, kind of use some of what I did on the football field to really kind of open doors um, in terms of business. Um, but a number of guys, again, they may not have the luxury of doing that if they don't really utilize their time wisely, um, especially with the social media platforms that are out there now. Guys are starting to be, become very social media active. Um, they become very business minded with some of their decisions and they take to the social media platforms to really voice and be, be a voice of themselves and even take on some of the social and political um, 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 topics that, that are relevant today. Yeah, I'm up here talking to you like you've been retired for 80 years <laughs> or something like that, but it wasn't that long ago that you were active in the NFL, but right. social media has changed so much even right. since the time you left the game to now. Right. What do you see that's different? And like, would you have gotten in trouble <laughs> if Twitter was as popping as it is now when well, you were playing? <laughs> well, right as I was exiting, um, <laughs> my last year was I think around 2011, 2012. Um, that's when Twitter was really starting to boom. Yeah. Um, and now there's an influx of social media platforms from. You know, obviously Instagram, you got the live, Instagram live now, you got, you got Snapchat, Snapchat yeah. you got all these social media form, uh, platforms. And I think just the influx of them and the guys utilizing them, you know, to the benefit um, of, their, uh, of their businesses, I think it's been great. I think if they can do it organically, because again, fans are starting to get smarter yeah. um, just as well as uh, the consumers out there. So. Um, just the influx of them, mm -hmm. um, the way the guys are utilizing um, those media platforms, I said, I think has been great. Um, again, for example, we talked about Antonio Brown, um, what he did, you know, uh, he plays, Antonio Brown plays for Pittsburgh Steelers and he went live uh, streaming after one of the games and the coach, you know, was uh, doing a speech or what have you and he got in trouble for that. So again, I know Antonio Brown personally, so I know he, he didn't do, any, do anything uh, malicious, um, but those are things that where if, you, if it's done at the wrong time, um, it can be a hindrance, it, it can be uh, uh, very damaging. Yeah. Um, so there are some things, obviously you gotta do some damage control after that, but um, again, you can have it, you can take advantage of the situation and there can be some situations where it can be very, very dam damaging at the same time. And you would have never done anything like that while well, you were Well, I, I always tried to police myself the best, <laughs> best way that I, that I could. Um, always trying to use your best judgment. And, right. and, and again, with all these things, just like business, it's gonna be trial and error. Right. And there are gonna be guys that try, just like in business, they're gonna try to push the envelope. Right. So you just gotta, you know, kind of police yourself and monitor yourself uh, and do the best that you can. Yeah, we mentioned this earlier just because um, the leagues are so different. And, the NBA has a different focus in marketing and building the brands around individual players. That's much different from the NFL. And when we, when I asked you before about whether the NFL had done enough to prepare you for life after football, do you think that they should be doing more to assist their players with navigating the social media space? Well, yeah, I think there's always uh, some areas of improvement. Um, you know, obviously they have things in place. Um, but again, in order to enhance and, and try to get on the level of, of, uh, of an organization like the NBA, you want to try to get on that level to try to compete uh, and be the best that you can. So um, I think it would be advantageous to try to do whatever they can um, to put the players in the best light and, and have as many platform and resources that they can possible um, for those athletes. Um, again, basketball is a little different. Obviously, you don't have uh, the number of players. Um, you know, in basketball it is football, so obviously they have uh, a little bit more intimate and more uh, assessment of, of time devoted to some of those individuals. Um, but again, with me um, and how I became a brand is I started to realize um, the things that I did on the football field, it's all about consistency. And so with my consistency, it brought about, um, coupled with my performance, um, it enabled me to do some of the things that I'm doing now. Now, I asked if you would have gotten in trouble when you were a player, but more recently, <laughs> there's a little vote for the Hall of Fame that did not go your way. Right. 
And you got on Twitter, and I, I only bring my phone up because I want to get the quote right. We're talking okay. about the Hall of Fame process. You called it a, quote, total joke. Was that a set of Twitter messages that came out off top? Was there a conversation that you were trying to provoke by having that conversation? Or was that just like heat of the moment, what you felt? You know, I think any, anybody that knows me and has been around me, I don't, I'm sure a lot of people have read a lot about me throughout the course of my career. Mm -hmm. um, number one, I'm very confident in who I am, how I was raised. Um, I'm very authentic. Um, you know, I kind of tell you how it is, um, whether you like it or not, or whether you like me as a person or not. I think I've always um, really presented myself in, in the best light. Um, I feel like the way that my grandmother raised me, I think she would be proud, um, considering some of the things that I've done. I, and, and for me, if I, if I was such a bad person, I probably would be in jail by now. I've been out of the league for a number of years. Um, but me, um, me assessing really kind of what the Hall of Fame is about and the criteria in which guys should be inducted into the Hall of Fame, I think I've covered all of those and I think they should be strictly related to the field. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of a personal opinions and feelings and emotions about, you know, maybe a, a, a negative interaction or maybe you didn't like, you know, something that I said. Um, and if you want to really base that on the reason why I'm not getting to the Hall of Fame, that's why I come out and I say that, yeah, it's a, it, 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 it's a joke. And I wasn't disappointed. I felt more disrespected because in, the Hall of Fame is really supposed to be about the body of work and what you've done on the football field. And I think that pretty much really speaks loudly um, for, for what I did throughout my career. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you had the opportunity to say that in the venue that you controlled. And I think that's, that's, that's the, the beauty of, of social media and, and how we're able to now, not only myself, but guys voice their opinions. Um, you know, and you get to be able to, to express yourselves and, and, and everybody don't have, they don't have to guess what you're thinking. Um, again, obviously, you can say some things, you can try to take it back <laughs> with delete, but by the time it's out there, it, it, it's out there. But I, I've, I've been pretty open and, and pretty steadfast in, in how I feel about certain things. And, and again, I'm not perfect by any means. I've made mistakes along the way. Um, it's, it's indicative to, to, to really kind of life after football and even in some of the business uh, ventures that I've, I've, I've you know, gone into. Um, there's going to be mistakes along the way, and those are, you know, life lessons. And I've, I've learned even a, a lot, even just going through some of the, uh, some of the, the, the mishaps of, of, you know, being in business uh, with, with, with partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that part up because having, I'll say it, a Hall of Fame caliber career, that has to get your foot in the door in a different way than, say, if I were just you know, looking to get into the tech space or pursuing different business opportunities. What does that NFL career give you in terms of a pathway into the business world? It, it, it gives you a platform. Um, um, it kind of, I don't know if it gives you the key, uh, <laughs> but it definitely gives you a welcoming, uh, a, welcoming a welcoming mat, so to speak. Um, and, and again, what I've done on the football field has enabled me to do some of the things that I've done off the football field. Um, and I'm very proud of that. The, the NFL has done a great job, again, um, of really kind of preparing myself. Sometimes I, did, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I kind of just kind of go with the flow. Um, but once I realized um, really kind of what I meant, to not only to my organization, um, but to myself, and then, again, transitioning from football into the, to the business world, um, some of the things, again, organically, it prepared me. Um, you know, there are things, again, that, that the NFL provide, um, but some of those things you kind of learn on the way, and I think organically I was prepared. You are someone who has a clothing line and who has dabbled in investing in the tech space. <clears throat> when you enter those meetings as Terrell Owens, NFL player, do they take you seriously? Well, I, I, I think, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it depends on who, who it is and what I'm walking, walking into. Um, but I, I like to be taken serious. I think, you know, being knowledgeable about whatever that meeting is about, I think that speaks volumes. Um, and again, you got to have the right team of people at the same time. You got to have some advisors. And I've been in situations where I've had bad advisors. Um, I've had some decent ones. Um, but you have to surround yourself with, with good people. And throughout, my, throughout the course of my career, when I, was, I wasn't as knowledgeable, when I entrusted and I put a lot of trust in the people that I hired, those are the ones that burned me when I wasn't really, 
I wasn't really 100% in. Um, really, I allowed, I allowed them to really kind of take control of the wheel, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, it's, it's, now I'm in the seat with them. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going into meetings, um, whatever it may be, whether it's you know, dealing with health, fitness, um, I'm very knowledgeable about those, uh, those particular meetings. Yeah, it sounds like what happened to you in the past with different financial advisors prompted you to be much more hands-on now, which seems like a luxury that you have because you're retired. When you're actively playing the, playing the game of football right. and you have to practice a billion times a day in their team meetings and right. games and travel, how much can you be hands-on in terms of your business priorities while you're still playing? Well, you can be hands-on as, as, you, as you would like, but I think a lot of guys, when you don't have that, you know, sometimes that solid educational background, um, or, you don't, or you weren't raised in a household where you had successful parents, or you had a mom and a dad, or whatever the case may be, to really teach you and guide you, then you really don't know. Um, so you kind of go with the advice of, again, the people that you surround yourself with, mainly for me, being in the NFL, you rely on those resources to kind of help you and guide you. So for me, having an agent, um, and then they recommend certain people to handle your financial uh, portfolio, you kind of trust that they're doing the right thing. And so a lot of guys, not only myself, we fell victim to, to those situations. And so they come in and they tell you, you know, we have your best interest at heart. You know, we're looking out for you when in, in actuality, sometimes it, that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. And that was primarily, that pretty much was the case for me, um, a stint, you know, toward the end of my career. And, you know, it was, uh, it was damaging. Yeah. Um, but lucky for me, I was able to really, again, take advantage of the brand and the name that I established by being successful and being consistent on the football field so people know who Terrell Owens is. Uh, and so now I go in and I present myself now as a business and not really just a football player, but that football player, the name, really kind of rings, uh, rings a bell. How valuable is that, your name, as equity when you're going in to talk to people who are maybe looking to start up rounds of funding or looking for others investors to partner with you? Does that, the name value help shape the kinds of deals a Absolutely, and I think with what I've done throughout the course of my career, how I've been able to carry myself in a positive way, um, regardless of whatever is written in, in terms of my character, again, I present myself in a professional way in the way that I was raised. And um, again, sometimes if you don't have, um, in, in, in certain instances when guys, they can financially, they can fund things, mm -hmm. um, that's equity. Um, again, with me, I have brand equity, which is just as equivalent, if not more, um, than what's out there on the table. So uh, it means a lot um, in a sense of, uh, of, of, of that type of value. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Business idols. You are a football idol to very many people, regardless if they'll tell you or won't. Who did you look up to in this space? You mentioned growing up in Alabama and not having a lot of role models financially to sort of guide you here, but like now, who do you look up to business-wise? Um, again, I, I kind of try to surround myself now. Again, I've, I've, I've tried to surround myself with the best mm -hmm. possible advisors. Um, but again, you know, again, I've trusted so many people that I really thought had my best interest at heart. So it's kind of kind of hard to really trust anybody at this point. Um, so I try to proceed with caution. Um, I try not to go into a situation where mentally I'm thinking I don't trust this person or that person. Or this person's after or have ha have an agenda or motive. Um, but for me now, I'm strategically going through the trials and errors and the mistakes and. Um, I try to strategically find the right people and now I have to go do my due diligence when somebody's brought to my attention or a name is brought up and somebody wants to represent me in, in, in some capacity. Um, that's when now I'll go and I'll help have people research these guys and I'll do my due diligence and do the same thing. So um, it hasn't been easy. Um, the transition for me, honestly, it, it's, it's been smooth, but again, there's been some ups and downs along the way, um, but that's 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 to be expected sometimes with, with any, bi any business, but it's all about how you respond to those, uh, to those obstacles. Yeah, very well said. Now that you're knee, knee deep in it, business, tech, entrepreneurship, what areas interest you about that? You mentioned social media, you mentioned health and fitness. What is exciting to you out in the space right now? Well, right now I'm, I'm getting ready to partner with a, a company called Self, uh, mm -hmm. C-E-L-F, um, and that's, uh, excuse me, <coughs> It's, uh, it's going to be a, a, the first 
kind of fitness wearable mm -hmm. um, technology. Um, it's similar to EKG, where I'll be able to monitor some of your, your vital signs. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I know as an athlete, um, and even somebody that's really just trying to uh, gain and lose weight, um, these mm -hmm. are some, this, this, this device will be able to monitor um, some of the hydration, um, what else? Some of the uh, related measurements, um, such data such as QT, QRS, ST, um, this is something that other fitness wearables can't really attest to. So this is something that's very interesting to me being a fitness guy and I think everybody has witnessed throughout my course of my career, that's really kind of what enabled me to really play at the highest level um, that I was able to. Um, uh, yeah, I remember <laughs> the hyperbaric chamber, duh, duh. Yeah, yeah, so again, becoming knowledgeable about nutrition and obviously these things go hand in hand, nutrition, uh, fitness, um, wellness, these are some of the things I, sh I started to educate myself about too because once I started to see the, the production um, of, my, of my career, um, I saw my stats begin to, to, to increase um, year in and year out. Um, these are things that I started to become interested in. Um, so I, I understood that in order to succeed and become you know, the best at what I did, I had to do things that other people didn't do. Um, so when I, I did listen to the guys that were close to me in terms of uh, my performance and what I did to prepare for football, I leaned on them for advice um, to put me in the best possible situation to perform at the highest level. Um, so these are things that, again, I, anything cutting edge within legal realms, then I, I, I kind of put my, put my hands on it. Yeah. Now that you're on the other side of it, looking for investments or looking for places, to build a brand and build a business. You mentioned the learning curve of getting into this. There's gonna be some trial and some error, particularly in the health space. How do you decide what is snake oil and what is a legit area of growth? Let's put it that way. What was that? Repeat that question again. Health, tech, okay. entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. How do you decide there are people coming to you left and right with different investment areas, okay. things they wanna partner with you on, how do you make the decision about like what is snake oil and like what is legitimate in that space? Because I think that's something that we all struggle with looking at tracking technology is one thing, but looking at what's actually going to improve performance or health is a whole different other. Well, thing. yeah, again, it's uh, the market is saturated with so many gimmicks out there yeah. um, that you do have to be careful. And that's where you have to do your due diligence. Yeah. And so for me, again, I Till this date, um, again, I'm in partnership, I'm in negotiations with a company, a nutritional supplement company right now. That's why I haven't really lended my name uh, to anything like that because there's so many gimmicks out there and I think if I'm gonna put my name to something, you know, based on my credibility, um, then it has to be, it has to be legit. Um, so again, I, I, I have a small, you know, team of people that I, that I lean on when it comes to really some of these, uh, opportunities that come my way. Um, it has to make sense and it has to be in the, in, the, in the wheelhouse of what I embody. And so for me, again, understanding where technology is and how it's taken over the world, everything is mobile. Um, it can be applied pretty much to anything these days. Um, I like the idea of where technology is going. I, I understand what I bring to the table in terms of my credibility, my value, um, and really kind of what I stand for. So again, even with some of the, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of establishing my clothing line. Uh, I launched it last year, but even within the last six to eight months, there's been some ups and downs with that. So even dealing with investors, knowing that you gotta find the right investor. Um, and some of the three keys to, to doing that is just really finding somebody that really, that is committed to the cause and not just the money of it. Mm -hmm. um, the money part, um, having some people that are loyal, um, and then just the passion, uh, finding somebody that's just as passionate about it and driven um, with it as, as, at the same time. Yeah, sounds like good advice. That is our time. So I wanna thank you for coming out and right, thank everybody it. who thank showed guys. up today. All right, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah.